Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining today's Insight Tech Talk. I'm David Eager with Insight Public Sector, which is the government-facing side of Insight. And with me today is Matt Fedorovich, who's the national lead for immersive technology within our Digital Innovation Solution Group. Matt, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? No, not too bad, not too bad. Um, so today we're here to talk about mixed reality in Microsoft's HoloLens 2, both from a commercial and from a government perspective. Um, you know, really to kick things off, Matt, can you tell us a little bit, you know, define mixed reality versus maybe the better known virtual reality or augmented reality, and um, which are really the better known terms in the industry? Yeah, so we definitely have a lot of alphabet soup uh, <laughs> in the industry today. Um, and mixed reality and HoloLens 2. HoloLens 2 is a mixed reality device or what's also known as a spatial computer. So we have this spatial computing spectrum. And if you think about VR, virtual reality, um, it's basically taking you to a fully immersive environment and removing your physical world, um, which is one end of the spectrum. And when you go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum, there's obviously a reality there. Uh, but within mixed reality, we're gonna basically take you as close to reality as possible within an immersive environment. Um, that's leaving your physical environment to basically have uh, interactions, different types of activities and immersion uh, and so on. So it's more of uh, a mixed reality kind of way. Yeah. Well, and I know that mixed reality, at least the concept has been around, you know, for years really, um, and I know, um, devices like the HoloLens 2 have done a, done a lot to really move it to where it, it's more of a reality um, in, in using in business cases today and, and really helping people enable the benefits of mixed reality. But what are some of the other differentiators that you've seen come out? Uh, definitely the, the first party apps that are being built and the applications that are being built for the device itself are the differentiators. Uh, for instance, Remote Assist uh, is one of the biggest applications out there today. It's personally, I have a conversation about that pretty much every single day. Um, and Remote Assist is really the hands-free collaboration tool uh, that leverages existing infrastructure that business is already using today, uh, but gives you a fully hands-free mixed reality collaboration experience, uh, which is uh, really helpful in today's world uh, where we're unable to fly experts to locations. Um, we need uh, experts to be on call all the time, essentially. Um, and Remote Assist is there to help. Well, I think that's a good transition, you know, because of the current state we're in with travel. You know, what are the applications for this device that you're seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, there's a lot of different applications for this. Um, and uh, there's different segments, and different industries. I mean, this, uh, this device can be used within any industry, right? We talk about uh, manufacturing, retail, healthcare is one of the biggest, the federal space. Um, if you look at healthcare today, for instance, um, we're working with uh, a lot of major hospitals today to provide that remote assist experience, um, basically to take one doctor, place a HoloLens on their head, and have a team of 14 doctors in another part of the hospital who aren't going to be exposed now. And that one doctor is floating around the hospital going patient to patient while those 14 doctors are talking to them, giving them instant patient information, uh, things along those lines and collaborating. Uh, so it's really, really powerful in that industry. Um, also, when you talk about training, you know, you look at the federal space for training, um, you take a look at uh, soldier based training, whether that's um, it kind of in the in flight in the in house or actually on the field. There's two different things there. You can do a lot of uh, a lot of data interfacing as well. There's a lot of data on the battlefield specifically, and all that needs to be translated in real time into an interface that's going to be easily consumable. And something like a mixed reality tool is really powerful for that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you mentioned military. I was talking to a a major uh, in the Air Force, and she does um, fighter pilot training. And she was saying that because of applications like the Microsoft HoloLens and the data that they can get, you know, they can determine things like um, fatigue, for example, or response times. And what this enables them to do is really have more of uh, an objective 
response. So if they see someone training to be a fighter pilot, it's no longer subjective saying, well, you know, I don't think you're going to make it. Um, you know, maybe let's focus in this area. Now they can get real data where they can say, hey, you know, because of the fatigue level you get, you see your response time slowing down. You know, this really probably isn't the right area for you to be in. So it saves a lot of time. It takes out a lot of risk because, you know, you don't want to find out when you're thousands of feet up in the air on a fighter pilot um, and, and something goes wrong. So definitely you're right on the military application. I think it's a great way to um, one, save a lot of money, but also really help target people in, in that real world environment without without putting them in harm's way. So no, that's fantastic. Yeah. And you have to think about return on investment um, yeah. and efficiency as well, right? Because you think about uh, there's two different types of efficiency that I see quite a bit. It's either we're going to go towards machine efficiency, you know, uptime, downtime. How are we going to manage that? And yeah. then that's all around data visualization and understanding data in real time. But then there's also uh, the human efficiency model where the device itself could be a tool to help you uh, to help people basically be guided through a large facility, you know, yeah. guided through the battlefield providing different visualizations and data points that they've never seen before because they've always been invisible. You know, they yeah. were stuck in, in the cloud or on IOT devices and not really present. And that's another piece that mixed reality brings to play is all that visualization uh, power essentially right on your head. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I, I see a lot of that from the, the training aspect, being able to incorporate the HoloLens device with remote assist, you know, getting people out to where they're training and and being able to work on what would normally be, you know, millions of dollars of assets, doing it in, in more of a mixed reality. So again, cutting down the price, enabling people to mess up without it having catastrophic um, consequences. So no, I agree 100%. There's also the question in terms of reliability, security, scalability of the cloud, AI services. How does that factor in? Yeah, it definitely factors in when we're talking about enterprise. Uh, you know, a lot of the times when we have conversations with clients, I make sure that their internal IT groups are always on the call because we always have this conversation about device management, network security, uh, you know, user profile, uh, kind of information sharing. How are we going to deal with privacy and things along those lines? And there's a lot of tools that Microsoft already has in place, uh, like Intune, for instance, where you're doing all your network security and provisioning and stuff like that with Microsoft devices today, like Surface. And that's easily translatable onto HoloLens too, because it already is a Windows machine essentially. Um, and then we're also bringing out new uh, products to light like Autopilot and things along those lines that are gonna make mixed reality even more powerful and a lot easier to consume uh, from your team essentially. So you put the device on and you're ready to go out of the box. Um, so it's it's definitely something to think about when you're dealing with scale. Uh, I'm going to start bringing this to your business today. Yeah, definitely a big time saver. So in the time we have left, really, where do you see this technology having new or future impacts? Yeah, I, as we move towards you know the the middle of the decade and towards the end of the decade, uh, the adoption rate is going to be exponential for uh, the enterprise space. We're going to have a lot. Like, you know, new devices that are gonna come out, there's gonna be an acceleration in that side, but then we'll also see the consumer side start to trickle in as well. Um, and that's gonna be kind of the same pattern that we had with mobile, right? With his, you know, turning it into a bring your own device, uh, moving into the enterprise space. So it might turn out, you know, not only are we gonna be bringing uh, devices from the enterprise specifically, but it'll be personal devices that are gonna have to start accessing things. So it's just a, a, a new generation, a new wave of computing uh, that we just need to start managing. And I think it's going to be really interesting as the consumer and the enterprise spaces start to heat up um, where a lot of this is, technology is going to land and uh, a lot of this data is going to land. Yeah. yeah, and I see the same in the federal space as well. The government is, is really taking advantage of these technologies, getting people trained quickly in a safe environment, but making sure that they're fully ready to do their job when they, they get out in the real world. So I, I agree 100%. Well, hey, Matt, thank you very much for your time. I think that's been very insightful, pardon the pun. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our next Tech Talk. Yeah, thanks, David.